Welcome to the SBC Update, HCAM's original programming updating you on all that is happening with the Elementary School Building Committee. I'm Mike Tarosian, your host. Here with me today are Mike Shepard and Rob Nickerson. So, fellas, we just had our meeting, yep. uh, mm -hmm. uh, August 4. We have a lot to talk about. And first, Mike, I'd love to know, people at home want to know, can you explain the schematic design process? <clears throat> All right. Um, again, Mike, thanks for having us, as always. Um, June and July, the building committee spent uh, at least one meeting a week, every week, uh, to pull together the schematic design. Um, what happens is, this isn't a, the schematic design is, is not a, a set of plans as some people think of them. Um, they're elevations, which is like pictures of the front, side, top. Uh, they're rough floor plans showing which part of the school is going to be used for what, the configuration, et cetera. Um, you couldn't build the building from the schematic design. Right. Uh, but in order to plan for the next phase, which is after the, the, the budget and schedule agreement, um, we're going to have to actually have a design design. Uh, the, the, probably the same architectural firm will take the schematic design, uh, which is just as I described, and they'll do a store-bought set of plans. For example, if, if you were the schematic design, the set of plans are probably a quarter of an inch thick. Um, the set of plans for the school will probably end up closer to an inch and a half thick. Um, there would be much more detail, um, but the rough parameters are already established in the schematic design. And that, thanks to all the public input, is what the building committee has been working on for the last two months. So um, just real quick on the schematic design, uh, before the big plans <coughs> come, it's, it's reviewed, looked at, as some more more public input. Yeah, what, what what happens is 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 it's been reviewed and looked at quite a bit already. Right. Um, not a whole lot changes. For example, uh, once he submitted it to the MSBA, we can't change the location of the school. We can't change. We can't go. For example, the schematic design is submitted as a two-story building. A significant change would be making it a three-story building. Sure. We can't do that. Right. Um, people have to understand that the schematic design is geared directly to the educational plan that was provided to the MSBA by the superintendent and the principal several months ago. Sure. So everything in the schematic design supports that educational plan. Um, so based on the schematic design, which we have, um, and, it, and I might note that the Board of Selectmen and the school committee at a joint meeting about two weeks ago um, endorsed the design, as well as the estimated project cost, which is the next thing I'd like to speak up, which is $45 million, a little bit more, perhaps. Um, and you might say, well, how do they figure the estimated project cost based upon schematics or, or, or rough plans, would you say? Well, the plans are, are uh, the schematics are finished enough so that estimators who do estimating for a living can figure this is probably what the heating's going to cost, this is what the hot top's going to cost, right. this is what the brick veneer on the outside, this is what the windows are going to cost. So what happens is our owner's project manager hires an estimating team. The architect hires an estimating team. They don't collaborate. They're two different things. Right. And then they get the both estimates together. And we got them a couple days before the selectman's hearing. And what happens is after they get both of them together, the, all the parties get together and they work out whatever differences there are. Um, the differences is in the order of magnitude of probably hundreds, you know, three or four hundred thousand dollars based upon a $45 million project that's pretty close. But they all got in a room and they agreed this is what <coughs> do. It's important to have that number because the MSBA needs that number now. Right. We submitted the schematic design, we submitted the estimated costs. The MSBA is going to review it. They're doing that now. Uh, they're going to have a meeting sometime in the 1st of September. And hopefully they'll say, yep, this is great. Now we can tell you how much we're going to chip in. We don't know that at this point. Right. We, we've been guessing it's on the order of magnitude of probably 40% of the cost. But people have to understand the MSBA doesn't reimburse everything. 
They don't, for example, reimburse for uh, legal fees, which will be right. substantial once sure. you start entering into contracts. They don't, for example, reimburse um, if, if we were going to put a sidewalk out on, uh, on uh, Hayden Rose Street, we'd have to carry that cost. They wouldn't carry that cost. And um, we're already talking about just that with the, the DPW. Um, but so you can't just take 40% or 45 and come up with a number. Uh, the number after everything is cleaned up that we're looking at is um, the, the net to the town would be in the order of magnitude of probably 32 million or in that range. Um, and we're working and the building committee is working um, because what has to happen is, of course, we have to have a town meeting. We have to present the schematic design. We have to present all the issues. We have to present the project costs. And hopefully, we'll get a favorable vote at town meeting and subsequently a vote at the ballot box after. Once we've done that. So at town, town meeting, it's a two thirds vote and yep. then a majority, majority vote. Majority at, at, at the ballot. Okay. Um, th there'll be a substantial uh, hit that, you know, in terms of taxes because it's a big project. Sure. And we will, uh, over the next two or three months, and on your show, uh, be in, able to portray to people exactly what the hit will be and what the value of what they're getting is. It's but it's too soon to do that now. We're gonna, it's too soon to do that now because we don't know how much the MSBA right. is going to reimburse sure. us. And what they do is different towns get higher rates. For example, they're building a new high school in Plymouth, and they're reimbursing 70%. And, and I think what the MSBA does is to have a a secret state formula where the pay upon <coughs> how affluent the community is, or, or et cetera, will give more or will give less. Right. Uh, but generally, we're around the 40% range. The, um, um, that's pretty much it. The schematic design is just that. It's schematic. It's, it's, uh, but the, the, the final plans will be based on that. Um, we have items in the schematic design that we're able to, you know, we may be able to engineer out and, you know, we just wanted to make sure that we weren't, you know, low-balling it or definitely not high-balling the cost. Right. Um, that was the idea of the two estimates, et cetera. So that, that's where so, we are. So now at this point, too, as far as the property goes, Irvine property. Yeah. We Town own owns it. it? Town owns it. Town owns it. it. Town owns it. So that, yep. that paperwork, that part's all done. It's yep. all yep. ours. Yep. The other part, just so I, and, and I'll let Rob do the, do, do the more important part here. <laughs> the, the, uh, the other part of it is uh, the, the town also owns the two-hour property as well as the Pratt property. In other words, the, a check has been written. The people have been paid. And it belongs to the community now. Uh, the selectmen and planning board are being very proactive as to plan what the possibilities they could use those properties for. Sure. Uh, so they're going to set up some kind of committee to analyze, you know, what the potential uses are. But I will say from the school buildings committee's perspective, we know exactly where the school is going to go. It's up close to EMC Park. Uh, that leaves the majority of the, the balance of the land to be used for other uses. But we're also uh, making sure that the access road to the school will also accommodate other uses. So it isn't like, you know, we'd have to reinvent the wheel in that regard. Sure. So between the selectmen, the planning board, and the elementary school building committee, we're, we're trying to do what's best for the community. Excellent. So Rob, could you help work on what's the town's master plan for <laughs> these properties? So how, what, what the process is uh, to figure that out? What the process is for the master plan for? The three parcels. For the rest, well, so that would be up to, and Mike, you might want to help me out with this board a little bit selection. too. I mean, that would be the Board of Selectmen select probably their purview to, to sort of work with the community to figure out what the right thing to do for those properties yeah. well, will would Will they be. keep the ESBC in the loop on that as far as that goes, or is it strictly up to them? Uh, it's, it's, I, I suspect it's pretty much up to them. The, the type of master <coughs> plan they're doing, as you may recall, and it's you know it's probably much longer ago than 10 or 15 years, but we did a similar thing when we purchased the Fruit Street property. Um, the committee got together and, and looked at the property, looked at the town's needs, and said these are all the possible uses for the property. Right. So that we're not caught off guard, so that we we make the best use of the purchase. The committee may find we're just going to leave it open space. Uh, it, it, that's why they have in the committee. So they're not. You know, the selectmen and, and planning board are being proactive, and, and the planning board hope is going to do what planning boards do. They do plan stuff. Plan <laughs> and, uh, it, it, you know, it, it, the land could just, you know, sit there idle, which may not be the worst thing. 
the only thing we know about for sure is the school is going where the school is going, because we can't change that with the MSBA either. Right. That's it. So uh, we have a special town meeting a few months away, mm -hmm. and uh, what, what's going to happen up until that point? You know, there's going to be some co more community outreach. Yep. So so. Kind of same as always um, in some regards, we're going to keep posting about our meetings on Facebook. We're going to keep posting things out on Twitter and on our homepage and putting all the important information that people could want on, in those areas. But I think, you know, this is now, you know, we're, we're sort of at the 10 yard line now and we want to push this thing over. Um, my job for the next couple of months is to make sure that if people come to town meeting, and when they come to town meeting, I should say, no ifs, um, that they walk in there and they know exactly why they're there and what they're going to see when you know Joe and Mike and the rest of us are up at the podium you know, presenting this package to the town. Um, I don't want any surprises. So my goal over the next two months is to, you know, I know we've reached a lot of people, um, but there's a lot more people that I know we haven't reached yet. I still, I still have people talking to me every day saying, you know, Maybe not every day, but you know, is that school project thing still happening? And well, right. you know, <laughs> you and I are close friends, and we should know that. But um, so, uh, so, so there's still work to be done. So we've put together um, a, a plan right now that we're going to start executing on soon, which is, you know, and it involves. Uh, a, a road show, which is something that I know we've talked about with HCAM yes. about um, putting together basically a, a presentation that we can take to whomever wants to hear it um, and maybe force that presentation on people who, <laughs> who, so, who so, just should hear it sure. too. So you're talking um, about bringing that on to like groups like say the Women's Club, HPTA, that correct. have their little yeah. standout group. But um, would you also take it to say a neighborhood? Let's say the people down in Charlesview want to hear about it and someone decides to host it, would you? Are you open to going to that? Absolutely, absolutely, and that, and that and that was another point that I wanted to make too. Is that you know we have a list of things that we know we'd like to do. You know, doing the road show, uh, maybe doing some sort of office hours at uh, you know at Cornell's or at Waterfresh during the day where we could have things set up and people could just simply come and come in and ask questions. Sure. Maybe we don't have a presentation to do, but we're just there to answer whatever questions they have. Um, all of that, but on, along with those things, which might be some obvious things, there's probably some things that we haven't thought of. That there's people at home, you know, talking to their neighbors or you know, sitting watching this, saying, "I don't understand why the ESBC hasn't blank," or you know, "I wish they did more blank." Yeah. We want to hear that. I mean, so we're, we're we're not living in a bubble, and we'd love to get the input from people as to what we could yeah. be doing differently, not just the things that they might think we're doing well. Sure. Um, so that we can make corrections as we go. And I well, think no one can say you guys are <laughs> in any kind of bubble here. I mean, you've been open right from the start uh, by, you know, open meetings uh, live on, on HCAM at the studio here um, and having those workshops. And, and I know people are still interested. I mean, if you can sure. get a full library on a snowstorm yeah. <laughs> to come out and do this, the interest yeah. is there. And, and they're still interested today. And the, the talk is still out there around town. Well, that's what we hope. And, and, and you know, like, like I said, we're going to do everything we can to get out there and kind of show the math um, so that when people are sitting in that auditorium and they see numbers flashed in front of them about, you know, per household hit for this school and, you know, grand total for the school and all of that, we want to be able to tell them how we arrived at those numbers, right. what those numbers actually are. But we don't want them to find out that day. It's going to yeah. be something that we get out there ahead of time so that if there are questions or someone says, hey, you know, your math might be a little wrong about how you, you hit that number. We want to talk to those people and just kind of figure out where, you know, what, what we could be doing differently. Um, we, we also include in your plan to educate the people that day. You know, the, the ones in, like, and I've been around town meetings for yeah. many years, and we know people don't get educated until they pick up their paperwork oh, yeah. walking in. I mean, they yeah. get uh, set up and take the input. I'm a, yeah, I'm a big fan of handouts. So one of the <laughs> things that we'll have um, we'll have put together as soon as we have all the right numbers. You know, like Mike said, we're, we have to wait a little bit longer to get all the details that are that we would we would consider to be kind of concrete for the community to make a decision. Um, we'll start putting together that basically, you know, two-sided, here's everything you need to know about this project at a very high level so that you can make a decision on it. Um, that will be distributed ahead of town meeting and then at town meeting so that hopefully when people come in, that sheet of paper that they pick up is one that maybe they already have crumpled up in their back pocket because they've already right. been looking at it. Yeah. Um, but again, I mean, I might be hopelessly optimistic, but I want everybody in that room to just know what they're going to see before they see it. And you know, we'll do whatever it takes to make that happen. Um, and if you know, that means that we have a lot of sleepless nights up until town meeting, then, then so well, what, be it. But what we're, you, what, we're, 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 we're very optimistic. One <laughs> way you can measure that success too is after your presentation, and, and, and uh, Dr. Collin will stand up and say questions. Yeah. And then if you hear the crickets, 
You were yeah. successful. Crickets yeah. are a good thing. Crickets are a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Anything else we need to uh, add? The other thing is, is, is people should know is um, we have a tentative schedule. And the schedule for occupancy of school is September of 2018. Yep. Um, and we're on schedule so far to, to, to meet that. Um, the, um, um, you know, pending no nothing we have unforeseen circumstances that's when we're going to hit so the kids will start school in September 2018. Yeah. So that will be the class of 2030 uh, yeah. entering something those doors, like that, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Be wow. right up there. Oh okay. boy. Yeah. Yeah. Three of my grandkids will hit it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> One of my kids might but <laughs> you know, to Mike's point though it's really exciting to see the plan laid out that far and to know that you know this 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 data is out there where there's going to actually be kids going into the sort of nebulous thing we've been talking about for two sure. years so it's kind of um, cool to think about that is that is outstanding <laughs> well gentlemen i that's great thank you very much for keeping us up to date on all this information it's Again, been man. uh it's it's been fantastic just how how transparent a committee can be and how hard you guys work just to get the information out there. I mean, you're a big committee, 16 members, uh, plus uh, a few other uh, people that come along that you need at the meetings. It, it, you guys are just constantly, constantly working on getting the, the message out there. So. Uh, congratulations on that. You thank you. Job. And also, thank you, Michael. I, I, I also say it's it's much much easier to be transparent than otherwise. Oh, absolutely. And, oh yeah. And, and, <laughs> you took the words out of my mouth. I'm sure people appreciate that, but you know, so you know, we're we're happy to do it. We're really thankful for you guys having us to help us get the word Great. out. Great. Yep. And uh, we'll be seeing you again. We'll see you soon. So, thank you again. And to catch up with everything ESBC ahead of their September 8th meeting at 6.30 here at the HCAM studios, visit their website, hopkinsschoolproject.com, or check out their Facebook at facebook.com, hopkinsesbc. You can also watch all of the ESBC meetings and past episodes of this ESBC update anytime by visiting hcam.tv. On behalf of the ESBC and everyone here at HCAM, I'm Mike Terosian, and thank you for watching this episode of ESBC Update.